Okay, so welcome to the webinar. And the topic of this webinar is Business Breakthrough Blueprint, how to get a flood of your ideal customers. And uh, my name is Sunil Baskaran, and I have uh, Bill Ballew joining us too. And uh, uh, so welcome. Hey, hey, Bill, welcome to. Hello, hello. I'm on mute because I'm typing and I don't want to annoy people. So Sure, yeah. So uh, great to have all of you here. We're uh, uh, going to start off by, uh, again, if you have any questions uh, and comments, uh, you can submit those questions via the chat box on your computer. Um, now, you're in the right place if you're tired of struggling with attracting clients and sales to your business. If you're struggling with that, or either you're starting a business or you're in the midpoint of your business and you're trying to figure out how to do that faster and better and more efficiently and get the right kind of clients to, then you're in the right place and I'm glad that you're here. Um, you're in the right place if you are ready to have a flood of the right kind of customers. And I do, really do mean a flood because if you're an entrepreneur, you know, some of you have quit your daytime jobs or you're in the process of doing so, perhaps. <laughs> and if you are, you know, you really want to aim at getting a flood um, as quickly as possible so you can have what I call the divine right of every entrepreneur, which is to have lots of free time and makes lots of money. And, uh, you know, Bill and I have a, a kind of lifestyle like that. It's very flexible. And we get the opportunity to uh, build traveling to Africa to do the first Internet marketing conference over there. And um, you have the flexibility to do that and spend time with your loved ones and your family. It's just wonderful. And I wish that for you. So you're in the right place if you wish to have that. And the key is to have a flood of the right kind of customers. If you don't have a flood of the wrong kind of customers who occupy a lot of your time. Uh, you also want to have a clear focus for, or if you're, if you're in the right place, if you're, if you're ready, if you're really ready to have a clear focus for profit and satisfaction, uh, if you want both, um, then you're in the right place. And if you're, if you're looking at up leveling your business game, if you are, I could say, you know, truthfully tired of becoming an, being an, being an amateur business person, you want to go to becoming a more mature professional business person with a steady flood of uh, the right kind of clients, then you're in the right place. A little bit about me and Bill. Um, so my name again is Sunil Bhaskar. For those of you who don't know me, I've been coaching people, mentoring them for 24 years. I'm passionate about what I do, as is Bill. And I'm an author of two books um, on Amazon. One is called More Money, More Time, Less Stress. And the other is an autobiographical book about me. It's called The Forgiving Universe. And I've got a networking Rolodex of about 22,000 professionals, probably way more than that by this time. Um, and I've owned a, a very successful coaching and training company here in Silicon Valley. Uh, Bill is a professor of social marketing and a PhD. And uh, he and I live here in the Silicon, beautiful Silicon Valley of, of California. Uh, Bill has uh, 90,000 unique total visitors on his website, has a meetup of 13,000 members and uh, like I said he's a much sought after speaker on the stage those of you who are interested in learning how to build your audience for speaking you want to pay attention to Bill in, in our future webinar series as well okay uh, a real life case study here this is my uh, one of my clients Charlotte it's one of my first early clients when I had my uh, official iteration of my business bought in 2000 the year 2000 and I first started with her Charla was uh, really struggling. Uh, she had a, a certification, I think, from Five Branches, um, which is an acupuncture school. And she was trying to figure out how to make ends meet. Uh, it's a pretty scary time for her and her boyfriend at that time, who's now her husband. Um, and I promised her, after looking at over her circumstances, that I could quite easily in increase her income by three times, at least three times within the next 90 days. And we actually did that. Uh, we actually more than tripled her income within the next 90 days. And she's gone on to impact tens of thousands of people. Not, I think, really, she's being humble about it. I would estimate a lot more than that. Um, and uh, she applies a lot of what I trained her to do. And she is a multi-million dollar, actually, uh, award-winning mentor for uh, people in the healing industry. Um, and I'm going to share with you a lot of what uh, well, not a lot, well, a good percentage of what I shared with her and I trained her to do today. Uh, so, um, wanted to share that with you. 
for those of you who are struggling, you know, Bill and I have been there. We, we've been there as well. We've been there with you. We've been in the situations where we're trying to figure out how to make this work. You know, internet marketing and online and even offline marketing has shifted completely. I mean, it, it changes almost every three to six months. But back when we started, there was no internet, uh, you know, and uh, we were working hard for a sale, trying to figure out how to get people to come to our meetups. I remember my first meetups, even when I first started in 2008, when I started doing meetups, that is, you know, we were getting uh, nobody showing up. And then after a while, a few people started showing up. Then we figured out how to make that work. And um, today we have about 15,000, if not more, members on meetup com combined. Uh, you know, I've gone through the process of having up and down results. When the results go up, and then they go really down, and you start doubting yourself, etc. And I want to show you how you can get out of that mode and get into more deep satisfaction and more balance in your time. If you're, if you're not getting enough balance in your life, if you're spending a lot of time working or worrying, uh, then uh, you know you're in the right place today. Okay. Um, it's a word of encouragement, but it's more than that. It's a word of certainty. You know, if you really, if you really follow a lot of this, what, what we're sharing today, there's a good chance, good chance that you're going to really turn your business around in the future. And what we tell people to do is you want to create a future vision that is bigger than your issues. What happens for most people is they get so embroiled in the issues that that's all they ever think about. But then they don't pause and go, well, what am I going to create in the future? And you see, for the most part, most of your issues are probably going to go away. It's just a matter of when. And I'm not trying to belittle anybody's issues. Um, what I'm trying to do is elevate you to see what the future could be. If your future, if you put more oxygen on your future, then your future will burn more brightly in your past or your current situation. You want to up the ante on a commitment to the future vision. Most people think only short term to short term. So they're only worried about what they're kind of doing right now. A lot of you don't really have a very strong muscle in managing your time and where you focus your time. So your time tends to fritter away, going towards things that really don't make a difference for you. But you want to up the ante on spending some time on developing the long term. If you don't do that, you'll never get to the long term. You'll always be going from one short term to the next. Um, but you can do that too. I learned how to do that. I'm going to train you how to do that, how to create more emphasis in the long term. You're going to create stronger accountability structures and systems to keep your eye on the future. Be willing to invest time and energy for a good measured return. It's important if you invest in anything or you commit to anything that you want to um, really create the structures for that and the accountability for that. And um, without that accountability and structure, I, I don't think I'd be here talking to you. Uh, if it wasn't for my first coach and mentor back in 1991, was a former Zen Buddhist monk, but also a former um, Korean War veteran. It's a very conservative, very successful business person, very, very present, charismatic, but his charisma came from really his ability to produce results in a very effective manner. Very soft-spoken, but very, uh, very clear in his intentions and very clear about return on investment. So, um, you know, my, my encouragement to you is if you're struggling or trying to figure out the business you just started up, you're in the right place. So the path to success, what we're going to create for today, we're going to talk about three secrets. And I do mean secrets because a lot of people don't really know this. Or if they do, it's more like a duh. Most insights are not ahas. Not like an aha, oh my God, I didn't know that. It's more like, well, I knew that, but I never did anything about it. <laughs> so it's going to be like three uh, duhs today. Um, secret number three, I'm going to start with number three first. And that's the one critical step to create breakthrough level business. Uh, missing this step often results in people failing. So I'm going to talk about that and what that is. Second one is two skills to develop in the next three months that's imperative to have. If you don't have these skills, you're probably not going to sell as effectively. And that's the brutal truth. And that's something I had to learn many, many times. A lot of you are new to selling or you resist selling. I know a lot of you outright tell me, I hate marketing. Uh, but you, you may have to review that sentiment for yourself. Uh, even if you hate marketing, you may have to learn to embrace it. Uh, you know, I had a client a couple, uh, month or so ago. She said, I hate my son, <laughs> but I embrace it, you know. Uh, and, uh, you know, my son's a, you know, he's a, he's, a, he's a handful, but I love him and I care for him and I know, you know, he's my life. 
And you want to treat your marketing like that. You know, um, you want to nurture it. You want to grow it. Even if you don't like it, you want to learn to like it and learn to accept it the way it is and what how it can work for you. Okay. Secret number one, uh, which is the last thing we'll cover, today, uh, is the three secret stages most successful clients go through. It's, it's the stages that we have in our own program that we lead people through to create the breakthroughs in one year. There's a special book gift that I'm going to offer at the end of the webinar, and it's a pretty cool gift, so you want to hang out for that. Uh, it's, uh, so we'll talk about that in the end. Uh, my promise is to give you as much as I can in this hour or so, a little less than an hour of our time here. And uh, my intention is to give you as much as possible, like I said, but there's a lot more to this um, that is impossible to really share uh, on, on a short time like this. All right, and then um, so let's start with secret number three. This is the first critical step to create a breakthrough level business. And that is, you know, it sounds very trite, but it's really having a clear commitment and focus, but I'm gonna drill down further and describe what that focus should really look like. So it's very easy to say commitment and focus. Most people bandy those terms around, but they don't really talk about what that really looks like. How would I observe you <clears throat> actually doing clear commitment and focus? Well, a couple of things, you know, but before I get to that, you want to distinguish between this concept of what you will do versus what you won't. So there are a lot of people who are saying, I'm going to do something, but they don't. You know, when you keep checking in with them, they keep saying, I'm going to do my biography, for example, but they never get to it. Uh, so it could be that you're not really committed to that just yet. You may be committed to it later, but there may be other things that you're more committed to. You want to get straight like that about what you will commit to and what you won't. Your results are the ultimate betrayers of the truth of what you're committed to. If you're not, you keep saying you're doing something, but you're not, you're probably not committed to it. You want to do it, but you probably won't right now. It doesn't mean you'll never do it. Just right now you won't. Now, that's important to understand. Because then you can save a lot of time for yourself instead of trying to worry about what you should be doing, look at what you will and focus on that perhaps as a start. Uh, there's a difference between committing and wanting. Again, the difference is in the results. You know, if, you, if you're not producing the results that you're committed to, then chances are you're not committed to it just yet. Or something needs to shift in your systems and maybe you need to start out at a, at a smaller level to make that happen. Yeah, I know the sun's shining on my face, but uh, we'll, we'll live with that for right now, okay? So I hope you all can see me and I'm not blurred out in the video. Um, so what markets, this is the primary question to really answer in a business and in a blog or if you're an author or if you have a project or a nonprofit. And that is you want to look at what your audiences are, what audiences you want to focus on, what markets you want to focus on, and you don't want to keep it too general because if it's too wide, if it's like everyone in the universe that you want to market to, then your marketing expenses are probably going to be very high and you're not going to get a good return on investment. So if you're trying to sell a book and the book's a children's book, uh, you don't want to necessarily market it to every single parent in the world because they may not have the budget to buy a book or they may not have the interest. So you may have to drill down a little bit more. If your book has a particular topic, you want to look at that topic or the interest that you have and match that with the audience. And the audience has to have a compelling enough reason to, at least within a few seconds, want to continue engaging with you. And that's very important to understand. And that lack of focus in your marketing will probably kill your business very, very quickly if you don't address it very, very quickly. Okay. The most important thing for most of you, based on the conversations that Bill and I have had, over the last couple of years, what you've seen and studied in our clients is that they're just not really clear who they want to focus on, who they want to sell to, that they enjoy selling to, that they can make money and satisfaction on, and that will quickly come into your database to engage with you. Okay. So um, a quick case study here. Uh, this is a health and wellness author that I started working with and um, a, a couple of years ago, actually. And what she did was she just wanted to sell to everyone. She had a great vision. She loved what she was doing. She was very passionate about it. Um, and uh, But she was trying to sell to everyone. And she had about, when we accounted for her markets, a current target audiences, we found about 15 target audiences that she was working with. Now, that's a lot of time if you think about it. If you're trying to cater to 15 markets, 
you know, she was going to all kinds of speaking opportunities. And if you look at the speaking opportunities, there was no real focus. You know, one time she was speaking to Ayurvedic practitioners. The next day she would be speaking to business people. There was no real focus and no clarity. And there was a lot of work to be done because she had to create different presentations for each group. You can get the idea now. It's very expensive in your time and money. So uh, what we did was we, in the course of the first four months or so in working with her, we moved the 15 markets down to about three. And they were three real juicy markets, really good markets. They were much smaller markets, but they had a higher concentration of people who had an urgency to buy her book and her other products as well. So the one year of focus yielded $127,000 more income than the last year. So you can begin to get the impact of this kind of work. Uh, secret number three, once, this is one step out of six steps that we have in our program to permit and focus. Okay, so what we suggest is, you know, in fact, you know, um, when you work with us and if you, want, if you want to do a session with us, one of the things we recommend is you list out your current target markets that you have now. Who do you have right now? Who are you working with? What are the groupings that you work with? List out the pros and cons for each of these markets. So market A may be good because it's a larger market, but you know the con may be nobody's buying <laughs> or few people are buying. And you want to get truthful like that. Um, and the intention again of this exercise is to start focusing on one or two markets at the very most. Uh, one of the best pieces of advice I ever got many, many years ago uh, was from a Silicon Valley entrepreneur. He's very, very successful, still very, very successful. And he told me one thing, he said, Sunil, one of the things you got to do is learn how to focus and have one market preferably to work on. Best piece of advice I ever got. And I hope you take it to heart as well. Um, secret number two, again, uh, so the number two secret is to develop these two skills. Now there's a, actually a, a, about 17, and I think that's very modest, uh, when I was trying to account for all the skill sets that we were gonna train people in in our program for next year. I think it's probably more than that, but it accounted for at least 17 main skills that you need to develop. But these are the two, one of the two most important ones. That, and if you don't do this, it's very difficult to create a large and engaged audience for yourself, especially an engaged audience of your ideal clients. So um, the, uh, the, the two uh, skills are a sales mindset and the ability to listen and measure. So in sales mindset, you want to start uh, being able to sell based on two things. Firstly, what is the pain that people are experiencing? And secondly, what is the vision that they have? Now, a lot of people tend to sell only to the vision. Oh, you know, I can help you uh, make more money. Oh, I can help you lose weight. Oh, I can help you become a better parent, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But a lot of those people are not really selling very well. Unfortunately, unfortunately, most people buy on the basis of emotions. And the biggest emotion that gets them out of their seat, giving a credit card or a check or a money order, is their pain points. So you have to get their pain points as well. And if you're not emphasizing their pain points in your marketing, then you're not creating enough of an urgency for them to do something. So the vision creates a nice thing to, that pulls them forward. But you have a, have a little bit of something that pushes them a little bit in the right direction. My experience of being a salesperson for many, many years, you know, people like being sold. The truth is, you know, they, they say on the surface they don't like being sold. But the truth is they like being sold for one good reason. They have a hard time making up their mind on what they need to do. They know they need to do something, but they need, and they, most people know this, they have an identified need. They want someone, a salesperson, to push them a little bit so they make the decision that they need to make. And it's truthful. I mean, if you're a salesperson, I'm not saying you have to push people without finding out what they really need. I'm saying you want to make sure you find out what they need, but also push them a little bit in the sense that you want to find out what the pain points are if they don't buy your product, or they don't, they don't engage with you. How is, what is it going to cost them? And if you don't know that, then it's going to be very difficult to create enough urgency for people to do something. So you can create a nice vision. Okay, I can make more money for you, but what's the big deal? If I'm already comfortable where I'm at, I'm comfortable making $100,000, why should I go to $300,000? Well, the pain point may be that you won't be able to save for your child's college education. 
or you won't be able to go to that vacation in Maui for the next 15 years if you continue doing what you're doing right now. And you won't be able to fulfill your dreams. And you won't be able to have that recognition in your audience, in your art, or your crafts, or your book, or your project. What does that cost you? How do, why does that impact you? Now you are cooking with gas. Now you've got people going, hmm, well, that sounds like a very good idea to make $300,000, but you know, it's sounding like a much better idea if I get off my comfort zone and start doing something. So to push people out of their comfort zone in a very gentle way, <laughs> or a more, you know, not coercive way, is to show them the choice. You know, if you don't do something, these are the pain points. And the biggest pain point is usually opportunity costs. It's what people are giving up because they want to be comfortable. So you got to identify pain points and you got to identify the vision. If you don't identify both in your marketing messaging, you're probably going to fail. You have to do both, okay? And that's the sales mindset. See, once you understand that and you appreciate that, sales actually gets a lot easier. Your copy gets a lot easier. You, try, you start figuring out what to say to your audience to move them forward. Okay, otherwise you'll get emailers that go out and don't do anything for you. Okay, so I hope that you take that to point. Uh, the second uh, sub point here, my second skill, is to listen and measure versus guess and what I call a shiny object syndrome. A lot of people tend to do guesswork in their business. They guess, okay, this is what I could try. And then, you know, the shiny object syndrome or what I call SOS, <laughs> which is really a call for help, which is they try anything they can. So they hear about a LinkedIn webinar, they go do that. They hear about a Twitter webinar, they go do that. And this is all great stuff. The Twitter webinar, the LinkedIn webinar, it's great, awesome stuff in there. And we've had great presenters doing that. But if you're only focused on moving from one tactic to another without thinking strategically about how you're going to uh, measure and find out how your audience is reacting to all these tactics, then you're wasting your time. So you want to develop the science and art behind listening and measuring. Now, it's both a science and an art because the art part is how you listen and uh, how you pay attention to your audience uh, in your conversations with them, in your live presentations, in your webinars, in your interviews with them. How do you listen? How do you pay attention? Do you have a listen? Do you already have a filter or a set opinion about your, your audience? And if so, you want to address that because maybe coloring how you view the real facts around your audience. And you also want to learn how to measure. By that, uh, you know, Bill and I, in our program, we are out to create very good dashboards, ways to measure the progress or lack of progress in your audience building so that you can fine-tune and make adjustments and get back on track. Very important to learn how to do that, have a good, solid dashboard that doesn't confuse you but tells you immediately what you need to do next. And that's important to learn how to do. And again, if you don't do this, you'll burn out or at best be lucky. Don't want to rely too much on luck. Uh, some of you may consider yourself very lucky, but luck tends to run out too. So you want to have it be driven by something a little bit more scientific and um, with some good skills behind it. So another case study here is uh, JG's fitness guru, uh, laughing because uh, when she first started with me, um, you know, she's a very nice, sweet lady, and everything that she says is very transformational, very spiritual, very wonderful. Uh, but she was not engaging with people. So she had this really great copy. It was full of beautiful pictures and lovely, healthy people. And nobody was buying because what we found out was her target market did not look like her pictures at all. <laughs> so people couldn't really associate with her marketing. They didn't see themselves in her marketing. They saw the ideal picture, but they didn't see her themselves. So imagine, you know, someone who wants to reduce their weight. You know, they're probably a little overweight. And so what we, what we started doing was um, we started engaging with their audience and interviewing the audience to find out what, they, what their real pain points were. And we found out that the pain points were, you know, boy, I'm fat. I'm sitting in my sofa after a long day of taking care of my kids and going to work. I don't have time to work out. I need something really short. I'm sick and tired of my life. I mean, we heard all this stuff and we fine-tuned the marketing to hit that so people could engage right away and it made a world of a difference in eight months the engagement she was getting a, 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 about a lead every week one lead every week every two weeks sorry that's right every two weeks and it went up to four leads per day within eight months okay that's an average of four leads per day that's a huge jump 
and she started being a little bit more picky in her selection of who she wanted to work with. And then she developed a larger scale program to address the larger groups of people who are coming into her site. Uh, until you get more leads, you can't really do anything like that. You can't be scalable in your business. You'll be a smaller business at best. Um, she also had a clear customized dashboard, which was virtual. So she could travel the world and look at her dashboard and then instruct her admins and her marketing people and making adjustments in their marketing. Very cool stuff to have. That we developed in about six months with her, and it was an online uh, actual dashboard that could use. Um, I was trying to get this to show you guys, but I'm, I couldn't do that after looking at her dashboard because it was a little too, uh, betrayed a little too, too many confidential stuff, so I decided not to do that. But uh, a dashboard is gonna be probably customized to each of you. Each of you is gonna have a different one, depending on your industry, your market, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, Bill and I actually just constructed one last night uh, for, for both of us to look at. And it's very clear. When you look at it, you immediately get, okay, what we need to do. You, know, you need to bump this marketing up in this area. It's very, very clear. You need a dashboard like that, just like you have a dashboard in your car. It tells you how fast you're going, how many miles you have before you run out of gas. You need a dashboard like that in your business. Very critical to do. All right, number two. Um, again, uh, you know, this is for the, the second secret. Uh, again, this is about one step out of 13 or 17 that we have. Forget the accounting for it. It's quite a number of steps that we actually present to you. But one thing we suggest is we that you actually review your previous prospects that you work with, who engaged and committed with you. Preferably someone who actually paid you money. And then list out the main points that had the clients engage and commit with you. What were the main benefits that you provided or the messaging that had them had them engage with you? What were the pain points that had them go, oh my God, I really have to do this. I have to solve this problem right away. And if you're not clear about that, then you want to come and talk to us about how you can get clear about that because that's important to understand. And I understand it's tricky sometimes to find that out from your clients, but we have ways to do that <laughs> in a very gentle but effective way. Okay, But you, you, you want to do your best to look through all the current clients or even people just engaged with you may not have paid you money but they engage with you, they're interested in what you're doing. You want to look out for, and try and list out the best as you can, what are the main pain points that had them get out of their seat and come and talk to you, okay? That's a really useful exercise and will lead to more yeses than noes in the long term to, from your audience to do business with you. Okay, the number one uh, secret here is, uh, is the, is the three secret stages that most successful clients have gone through. So in my studies, my clients have gone through the breakthrough level and produce uh, high six figures or a million dollars up or even medium six figures or low six figures, uh, but have a lot more satisfaction, a lot more free time. Uh, are these three time periods that I'm showing right now in the PowerPoint. The first is the first four months. Uh, we, we have a 12 month program and it's split up into three four-month periods. The first four months is dedicated to research, strategy, and, and planning. It's not entirely dedicated. There's also time that we want to work with you to start developing some cash flow while you can uh, in the time that you have. But you want to focus more on the long term because that's imperative to do because if not, you'll never get to the long term. So you've got to do some research in your markets, interviews, verbal interviews preferably, and we'll train you on how to do those verbal interviews. But you want to look at these four months and first four months, even if you take some time off from doing sales and work on just the research, the strategy and planning, money and time well spent. Very much so. Okay. Um, so you want to do some research, like I said, research your target markets, um, figure out a strategy and how to approach them. What are the pain points? Uh, and uh, what are the... Uh, you want to have a plan that uh, for the next 12 months inside of with some milestones to it. Without milestones, you don't have any urgency and you don't know if you're on track. So you need to have some milestones every month for the next 12 months or the next 15 months or so that tell you, A, you're on track. Or if you're off track, you need to do something to get back on track. But also it creates urgency now for you and uh, so, you know, there's a, you need to have a fire underneath you 
Otherwise, mm, probably nothing will happen. And there's nothing wrong when nothing happens, but you want to be straight about it. If you want to have your project be a hobby rather than a business, then fine to do whatever you're doing right now. But if you truly want it to be a business, then you, you, you have to do something a little bit more disciplined than what you're doing right now. So the first four months is research, strategy, and planning typically. But there's also cash flow generation while you're doing that. You want to always develop cash flow. And the best way to do research is sometimes to try and sell something, see if people catch on. So, you see, it can actually work very well with the research and your current cash flow situation. It might actually work even better because you could find something in those first three to four months that will actually cash flow better for you with less time out or less hard work for you. The second four months is what we call fine tuning. It's fine tuning what we're learning in the first four months by doing what we call smart experiments. We try different markets. And we have very good, what we call sale funnels or sales processes with systems behind them and a good dashboard that gives you good numbers, that tells you how to fine tune your strategies, your tactics, and your machinery or your systems to make sure you're on track for the goals for the year. The last four months is usually the best uh, or the greatest, you know, depending on your perspective. It's what we call the breakthrough stage. This is where Typically, Bill and I will see people creating about or having created about 800 to 1,000 pieces of content. Most people are surprised when that occurs because it's, if, you're, if you're building up slowly, usually you know, your results, your breakthroughs creep up on you. It's that constant work in the first few months that builds up for that breakthrough. And uh, you know, in a weird sense almost, I'm not spiritual or religious in any way, but you know, the I believe in some sense that the universe likes to respond to hard work and discipline and, and a buildup. And if you think about it statistically, it kind of makes sense. If you're reaching out to so many people and you've got such good messaging, at some point, it's a good chance something's going to pop for you. So typically in the, in the last four months, it's what we call the breakthrough stage. That's where you have about a thousand pieces of content written. They're generating traffic for you. People are coming to your site. They're getting engaged in a sales funnel. The sales funnel is effective because you know what the pain points are. People understand the pain points. They see you understand their pain points. They want to engage with you. You get them through a sales funnel that, that puts them through some stages reasonably and appropriately to build up to a sale that makes more money for you. And uh, so all that's being developed in the first eight months or so. That last four months is where you start seeing great results come true if you do the work. And if you have the right market. You know, and you've got to find the right market or else it's very difficult to create that last four stage. Uh, another case study here this is LR. Uh, LR. Uh, he created a software. It's a fairly young guy, mid-20s. And um, uh, he came to me with this idea, which I thought was a good idea, but it had a high degree of competition and he had zero income coming in. Um, and so, like I said, it's a good idea because I'm a fairly technical person. Uh, but he had no plan, no plan for it, and no investor wanted to touch him because he, he was kind of young and his messaging was not very good. And he was just trying to get funding from everybody he talked to, <laughs> including the high-level investors. He had a lot of enthusiasm, but uh, he was not getting anywhere. And uh, so what we did in the first four months is we got clear on the messaging. Pain points, we interviewed, we did verbal interviews, we recorded interviews, we analyzed the interviews, we found out what the pain points are, we constructed a very good sales funnel for him and an investor funnel too for him. Started working a lot better. His PowerPoint or his slide deck that he created was converting now. More people wanted to talk to him than ever before. Uh, so we got very clear on targets for the clients, what kind of clients or customers he, he wanted to approach and also the investor types. And interestingly enough, the first round of funding came in very good terms uh, and it was one of his clients who liked his product so much that he decided to invest with him. It took a while, but it happened. Uh, 12 months funding, team of four, and 50,000 in for funding. Okay. Uh, now, it's not a big funding project for if, you, if, you, if you're a tech startup person, but it's good enough for him. <laughs> it's a good enough start for him. Okay. And uh, so if you're looking at really turning around your, your business, whether it's a tech company or a small company, it's the same principles. You want to target yourself. You want to go through those three stages. And you know, it may take a while, but it's that discipline that really creates the breakthroughs. Okay, um, the the tool here for the uh, you know, like I said, there are three stages that we go through in our program. The first stage 
I call it the truth will set you free pro stage. You know, uh, you know, Gloria Steinem said it, you know, the truth will set you free, but first it might kind of piss you off. But you want to go through the first initial suffering of piss off and anger or upset about the truth about your market and how well you're not, or how well, or how not so well you're doing, uh, or how better you could be doing, and then start asking different questions. Because if you're asking the same question, about how can I make more money? It's not going to give you anything. You've got to ask different questions. Now, different questions are how can I find the right target market? Where are they? How can I find them? What, which markets will lead to profit and satisfaction for me? If you're not asking those questions, then you can have the greatest machinery in the world to develop leads, et cetera, but you won't convert and you won't make money. You've got to do both. You've got to create the traffic systems, et cetera, the tactics, but also think strategically. Okay. So um, we're, uh, we, we shared a lot about our content and stuff, and I'm going to get to the free gifts here pretty soon. But uh, I want to let you know that we're offering a free, complimentary, very influential person strategy session. And you can get this by going to this website that I'm showing on the screen right now. Those of you on the phone, that website is www.yourvipss.com. So that's your vipss.com. That's y o u r v i p s s dot com. So you want to go to that form. It's a very simple form, and you go to that page. You can scroll down a little bit, and then fill out the information, and then click the button at the bottom, and we will respond to you within 24 business hours or 48 business hours at the very latest uh, to schedule a time with you if we approve your application. And what we want to go over in that session is a one-year plan for you, a very top-down level simple plan to up-level your market audience. What, what are the things specifically that you will need to do? And I actually spend some time and Bill spent some time looking at uh, your details. You know, if you give us enough details, we'll look at it, we'll look at your site, et cetera, and make some suggestions. But the most important thing is what is a plan that's gonna get you to a breakthrough level? So that we are offering this session and it's very limited seats. We're actually already getting people registering in our program as we are speaking. And um, there are very limited seats for these strategy sessions, so make sure you get your schedule in, or schedule a time, or your application rather in as soon as possible. Um, so the summary for this uh, uh, for this webinar, the first thing is to commit and focus, and you want to commit and focus to your target markets, preferably maximum two target markets within the next four months or so that you want to focus on. Get rid of all the other markets that you are trying to cater to that are not bringing you money or satisfaction. So you want to learn how to commit and focus in that manner. You want to shift your mindset in terms of sales towards pain points and how to listen and measure and um, take, the, take that very much to heart. Uh, the last point that we covered today was creating and executing a plan. We talked about the three stages that we went people, that we guide people through and we recommend that for you too. Okay, all right, um, so the special gift. Uh, so hold on to your horses and hold on to your seats. Uh, so I'm offering my book here that I'm showing the cover off on those of you on the computer. It's called More Money, More Time, Less Stress. And I wrote this book about two or three years ago now, I think, and uh, it actually has a great stuff. It's about 100 pages, short book, very easy to read, big, big writing. So those of you who are my age can write, can read it easily. Uh, and uh, it, 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 <clears throat> the premise is really how you get, get to more money, more time, less stress. Um, and uh, so we're only offering this to the first five people who email me at my email, which is on the site right now. And that email is sunil, S-U-N-I-L, at chahayamind.com. That's C-A-H-A-Y-A-M-I-N-D.com. And the first five people who email me will get an autographed free copy. I might be a little generous. Yeah, beyond the first five, but uh, you want to be at least the first five. Be sure to include your full name and your mailing address. Uh, otherwise, I won't know where to send it to. <laughs> so make sure you do that. And uh, again, so you get a copy of my free, uh, a free copy of my book, More Money, More Time, Less Stress. Uh, it has some amazing stuff on how you can use your brain, practical stuff on how you can use your brain on a daily basis, how you can improve your brain power and convert that brain power into more money, more time, less stress. I uh, highly recommend the book, of course. All right, so uh, that's a special gift. And um, again, I'm going to take some questions and answer. I already have some questions, so I'm going to answer those questions first. 
If you have any more questions, feel free to enter them to the Q&A box at the, at the top. Um, and I look forward to your questions as well. Uh, and I'll do my best to answer all the questions, but um, I have about maybe 10 minutes or so here. Okay, so first question is, uh, uh, what are the stages again? Okay, so the, the, the stages are four months each. And the first stage is on uh, doing your research, your target markets, and uh, uh, figuring out what the pain points are and designing your sales funnel. That's the first stage. It takes about four months, conservatively. Some people make it about two months, one month. This depends on how aggressive you want to be and how much time you have, etc. The second stage is what we call fine tuning. At that point, when you're working with Bill and I, you should have about 800 and 900 pieces of content. Bill also does a lot of stuff in the first month, which is about designing and making sure you have the right taglines, the right kind of blog or, uh, article topics, etc. The second four months, second stage is really fine tuning that process, looking at your dashboard, making sure that you're on track. And then the third stage is breakthrough, where you should have about a thousand, eight hundred, a thousand articles. And that sets up very nicely for your second year. Your second year of business is going to be extraordinary if you do all this work. It'll probably be a watershed year for you. So those are the three stages. All right. Um, so, um, Let's see, the other question I keep getting now, <laughs> it's the third or fourth time people are, uh, yeah, you'll get a replay of, of, this, um, of this webinar uh, if you're opting in. You should be opting in if you're on this webinar, and uh, we'll send out a replay for you so you have it, okay, so you can watch it again. My emphasis is uh, instead of replaying it and watching it again, which I welcome you to do, take the action, do the VIP session with us, and that'll probably give you way more bang for your time. Probably summarize a lot of stuff and clarify your questions much more easily. Okay, um, and uh, okay, a lot of questions here. Yeah. I'll get to the email once you. Where are you located for coaching? We are located in the Bay Area, but we can work with anyone across the country. So even if you're actually around the world too, so we have clients everywhere. Um, and uh, but we are located in the Bay Area, and we do live events in the Bay Area, but we do webinars that and coaching over the phone uh, and virtually, so we can reach anybody in the world. And if you're on the Mars, Mars space station, we can do that too with you. <laughs> um, okay, and uh, next question. Now, what, once you have developed your pain points in ideal markets, what is the best way to reach out to prospects? Well, well you know, this depends, Catherine, who asked this question. It's a great question. See, it depends. You want to put uh, the tactics, whether it's cold emails, cold calls, asking for intros, etc. You want to put that secondarily to the strategy. Figure out your strategy first. Figure out what your markets want. Figure out the nature of your markets, where they hang out. Because if you don't hang out at home, you don't want to do cold calls. If they don't hang out online, you don't necessarily want to do emails. So you've got to figure out your market first before you hit that. It's a good question, but the problem is a lot of people ask that question and they don't think strategically first. So the thing for you to do, Catherine, is to think strategically and then based on the strategy, get down to the tactics. Don't put tactics before your strategy. That's like putting the cart before the horse. It's kind of crazy, you know? You want to have your strategy, which is the horses driving your tactics. And, you know, the biggest strategy, the biggest question is, Mr. Market, what does Mr. Market, call it Mr. Market, your market, your audience, what is your market demanding from you? And if you're not addressing what they're demanding of you, then your cart's going to go in the wrong place. <laughs> okay. I hope that helps you with that question. Okay. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the difference between commit, commitment and wanting? They're a very good question. Um, commitment, you see, the real difference usually occurs after the fact. I'll explain. It's in your results. Your results always betray what you're committed to versus what you want. So if you're getting results in a certain area, for example, if you're, uh, you know, if you're losing weight, then you, you know, you, you're probably committed to losing weight. Now, of course, there are exceptions to that. You may have other things that are in the, in, in the way of that, physiologically, in your body, genetically, et cetera. So, of course, I consider that. But on the whole, a good measure is when you look at your results and you look at what, where you're spending time. If you say you're committed to generating sales and marketing, but you're only spending about five hours a week or a month on sales and marketing, hmm, there's a rat in the woodpile. You probably want to do more sales and marketing because you talk about it but you don't necessarily act on it. And if you're not acting on it and there's nothing showing up on your calendar or nothing showing up in your results or nothing shifting after a couple of months in terms of the results that represent the commitment, 
then you're probably not committed to it. You probably just want it. Now, that doesn't mean you just end the story right there. Because you see, I've seen people turn around when they get that they need to commit to something. People always turn around, no matter how bad things get in their business, when they decide enough is enough and I need to commit and commit seriously this time, not like how I did it before, but this time actually put something at stake. So having a coach or having somebody or putting money down on a program that you, you have a strong insistence yourself is going to pay you back multiple times and you're willing to do the work, you're carving out the time, you're scheduling the time to do the work, said putting down the money, etc. That's when you start committing. You know, when your child, if you have a child, uh, keeps saying, well, yeah, man, I'll clean my room, you know, whatever. But if your child says, hey, I'll get my room done by tomorrow or I'll stop watching TV. I, <laughs> some of you are going, yeah, big dreams, you know. But, you know, if, if your kids say that, then you know you've, you've got commitment. Kids understand that, by the way. They, they know how to manipulate you and they know, they know when you're committing to something and when you're not. Uh, so you want to play that game too. You want to be truthful about your commitments. You know yourself if uh, you're committed to something, if your results are coming through and you're really doing the actions to make it happen. If you're committed to losing weight, then you want to schedule time to cook food that's healthy and nutritious for you. You want to commit to and schedule times to exercise. Similarly, in marketing and in business, if you're not committing time for the long term, then you're not committed to the long term. You're committed to probably suffering from short term to short term. What I tell you is, you know, if you, at some point you got to drive up the pain points and go. Um, am I willing to stop doing the insanity right now of the going from short term suffering, or sorry, uh, going from short term joy to short term joy, but having long term suffering? If you want to switch from that to long-term joy with short-term suffering, because there's going to be some short-term suffering you have to go to to get to the next level. The real question is, are you willing to go through that short-term suffering, putting your money down on something or investing in something or a coaching program or spending time or scheduling time apart from watching TV? That's when the rubber starts meeting the road. So very good question, Laura. I appreciate the question. Uh, your Indicator will be whether you take actions. So like when I first started my business, you know, I needed, I was looking for a mentor. I couldn't find anybody. Someone told me you need a mentor. I had no clue about business. And my mentor finally came around. I, I thought he was fantastic. He was an amazing uh, person who had a lot of credentials behind him. He's very picky about who he worked with. Um, but I finally got him to work with me. And he charged me a thousand bucks a month. And I was only making about $40,000 as an engineer for a year. A lot of money. But, and I didn't know how to make, you know, make the payments, et cetera. But I said, no, I need to do this because my commitment, and he agreed with me and I coached it, was to make at least five times a month that money back in the next one year. But he told me it's going to take some work and you have to do the work and you have to invest the time and money. And if you don't invest the money, I can't see if you're really committed to this. And uh, he worked as hard as I did. Like Bill and I work with people that we work with. But that's what it takes to see it. So I decided to do it. It was a big gulp in my throat, and I decided to sign the contract and give him my first check. But I did it, made it happen. And I tell you, I showed up at every coaching session on time. I would drive early. I would make sure I got there early. I got the homework done. And I showed up like that. It was the first time I actually showed up for something fully, you know. And um, it made a huge difference for me just doing that. Just committing to something, that act of declaration, going through the fear, and then saying, this is how it's going to go. I'm going to take the risk. It's a irrational risk, but I'm willing to take the risk and make it happen. It made all the difference for me. I, I, I can tell you, if I didn't make that decision, I probably wouldn't be sitting here today. I'd probably be in some cubicle in Silicon Valley working as an engineer. Probably a fine life, but I wouldn't be making a lot money than I'm making now. I'm probably not having the flexibility of time I have. So I hope that makes sense. All right. Um, more, a couple of questions here, and then we will complete uh, to respect your times. So uh, first stage, how do you create cash flow uh, in the first stage if I'm dealing with cash flow issues and I want to do the program? Oh, good question. Yeah, um, we don't get that a lot, but some of our clients do have issues like that. And you see, in the course of doing the first stage, you know, that we talked about the target marketing, et cetera, um, 
no guarantees in this, but there's a probably a really good chance we'll come across a good quick idea and a good quick target market that we can experiment with, with a simple offering, something you can put together pretty quickly to offer to that target market. And within weeks, maybe start generating, I say maybe start generating some cash flow for you. I can't guarantee anything for you, but that's probably more efficient and more effective than trying different things, et cetera, et cetera. But if, in the course of doing the work, you'll probably see that because if you're doing interviews and talking to people and getting information, doing research, more dots are going to be connected in your head and we'll figure out something in the short term, a quick, easy product or service that you can offer that can generate quick cash flow for you, make a really good compelling offer, address the pain points directly, make an outstanding promise that you can stand by and uh, generate some cash flow. So we had a web design person, for example, come in and in looking at the target markets, we saw that there was a certain segment in the market that was suffering because they were not getting websites done quickly. These people were like almost clamoring for it. And we said, looked at each other and we said, what good? I mean, it, it's pretty time intensive for him. He had to spend about maybe 10 hours a week, I mean, for a, a, at one shot doing it. But he could charge about $3,000 doing that. So in about two weeks, he had about 15,000, I think there were three clients that came in or five clients that came in that got him about $15,000 cash flow, kept him growing for another couple of months. So we can do stuff like that with you, but no guarantees. But like I said, that first four months doing that research, that's where the dot starts connecting and you can make cash flow there. Okay. So thank you for that question. Um, let's see. <laughs> Trying to recognize my handwriting here. Okay. Um, okay, I'm going to go to the next question. Okay, so the system dashboard, how do you create that? Uh, what are the steps to create it? That's a good question. The steps are finding out all your pain points, etc. And once you find your pain points, you'll figure out the sales funnel. The sales funnels are all the steps you need to go through. So they don't know you through they find out about you online because someone reached out on your behalf, perhaps. And then um you know, you, you have an opt-in page that people opt in on, on online and they enter your database and then you send them some drip emails over time or you engage them in a blog, et cetera. And then you, you give them specific messages that guide them through becoming a high paying client. And that's your sales funnel. Once you have your sales funnel, we can measure the conversions at each stage of your sales funnel. So from People coming in, traffic coming in to webinar opt-ins, as an example. What's the percentage there? If the percentage is too low, then we have to work on getting better copy on your site to convert people who are visiting your site to the webinar. And then from webinars to free sessions, what's the conversion there? And if that's not working, then we got to look at something else or alternative ways to bring in more people for you. So, it, so it's those stages of your sales funnel is critical to find out first before you design the sales, your dashboard. So if you have only five stages in your dashboard, you may have maybe five or 10 things to look at, probably about five things to look at on your dashboard, the conversion rates between each stage or the numbers of people coming in. So um, that's a very simple explanation of dashboard, but it's probably going to be customized to each of you. Each of you will have a, probably a different kind of dashboard. You'll get a dashboard if you work with us in our program within about five five months or less. Okay. Um, good question. All right. Um, how much does your program cost? Oh boy. Uh, so we we are offering the program at a very low investment rate right now. If you come in on a strategy session, we have a very special offer for you. It's so ridiculous. Even my coach, truthfully, was looking at me going, "Are you crazy for what you're offering? That's that should be a fifteen thousand to twenty thousand dollar course." Believe me, we're offering it far less than that. Uh, and if you come in a strategy session, we'll give you a special offer for that. And uh, we'll tell you about that. Okay, I promise that. I'm not trying to be elusive about it. I just want to make sure I'm in integrity about it. And because uh, we are going to raise the prices, and I don't want to give a price right now. But if you come in a strategy session, we'll tell you what the price is. And we do payments as well. And, you know, if you show a, a demonstrate a commitment to us, we'll work with you on payments. We'll make it work for you, okay? All right. Is this the right time for me to do a program uh, or a more intense program? Um, you know, the choice is obviously yours. But I'll tell you one thing. Um, in my experience, there's no such thing as the right time. 
<laughs> you know, a lot of people are always waiting for the right time and they go through a period of waiting for the right time for years sometimes. And it can be very frustrating. I can only understand or see that it can be very frustrating if you keep waiting for the right time. Now, I'm not saying don't do your analysis and your due considerations. I'm not saying anything like that. I'm saying if you're waiting, but you're not doing anything and you're not moving forward, then it's probably something you want to look at in terms of whether you're committed to really moving forward or are you procrastinating or do you just not have an interest really in moving forward? You know, sometimes it may save you a lot of time if you decide not to move forward, go do something else. Um, but you want to look at, uh, you know, what, what you're using your, your time right now for. If you're, if you're spending a lot of time trying to decide what to do next, then my invitation is get on a strategy session and help us work with us so we can help you decide very quickly what you need to do next. And if you should really focus on this or go do something else, that can save you a lot of time in itself. So you've got to ask the question, are you procrastinating? Are you really looking at the future? Is the future, every time you procrastinate, your future is the opportunity cost. Your dreams, your ambitions being fulfilled, what you want for your family and yourself. So you've got to always ask the question, if I'm procrastinating, what is this costing me? You know, most people don't ask that question because the comfort zone is so alluring. You know, it's nice to stay in the comfort zone. And going out of the comfort zone can be kind of scary. So you've got to weigh that scariness versus what's available beyond the scariness. You know, what is the future you want to go to? And if you want to go for that future, at some point, you've got to invest in something. You've got to invest some money or you're going to invest some time or energy. There's no quick fix, ladies and gentlemen. You know, you've got to, somewhere you've got to spend some money and time to make something happen. So I hope you get the, the spirit behind that. Uh, something that Bill and I have learned painfully over the years, you know, it's, it, uh, you can learn all the great, great tactics, but if you're not really in, um, if you're not really <clears throat> looking to commit to something <clears throat> or look at a, a, a particular target market to focus on, it's all going to be what I call bukaka. Bukaka is a technical term that means bukaka. It means nonsensical. Uh, it means that uh, you're not being truthful about real focus and commitment. My invitation is, uh, there's nothing wrong with Bukaka, by the way, if you acknowledge it, because then it becomes a hobby. And it's fine to have a hobby. But if you want a business, then you'll have to look at something way more serious. And all the suggestions today that you have is what I recommend. Definitely do the strategy session with us. Okay, great. Um, I think I covered all the questions thus far. There are a couple of questions, that, but they appear to be duplicates. Um, and... Um, you know, I'm not going to answer those questions. Uh, Valeria, oh, thank you. I, I do remember you, Valeria. Uh, a student of mine in 2009, I do remember you. I had a great coaching for you. Um, and crazy successful working for Stanford. Okay, got it. All right. Not found what I want to do. Uh, will I take you back? Of course, we'll take you back. Yeah, apply for the strategy session, Valeria. Valeria. I do one, right? I remember you. Wonderful to have you come back again. I did enjoy coaching you, and uh, uh, I, I know you're at a different stage right now. I'm not going to read all your details because I don't want to betray where you work, et cetera. Thank you for sharing that, though. Um, and, uh, yeah, we can help you for sure. Um, you know, a breakthrough takes uh, stages, and like I said, those three stages, if you work with us, we'll work with you to get, get there. Uh, but it'll, it'll take some work. Uh, the first stage is to sign up for that, uh, that uh, VIP strategy session. So Valeria and everybody else is interested in that, make sure you go to yourvipss.com and, uh, and uh, apply for the, for the session as soon as possible. Because truthfully, really, I mean, next week I have a ton of applications already and I'm trying to schedule people for next week. So the sooner you get in um, your application, the sooner I can get you or get talking with you next week or Bill can talk with you next week. Uh, if you don't get to us within today, probably going to be another two or three weeks, and we might actually close it out by that time. And that's the honest truth, ladies and gentlemen. We already have a couple of registration coming for the program. And, um, uh, you know, Bill and I have agreed that we're going to uh, limit it to 20 to 30 people maximum. It's going to be probably about 20 people in our program for next year. So make sure you get um, on your application for the strategy session. Like I said, I hate to be so much repeating himself, but sometimes I need to because people don't hear it. And they keep asking me the same question. What's that website again? <laughs> so the website again is yourvipss.com. That's Y-O-U-R-V-I-P-S-S.com. 
and apply for the session. Give us the relevant details that we asked for. Try and give us a little bit more detail uh, as best as you can. Uh, give us as much detail as you can, I should say. And, uh, and then we'll approve uh, your session. If we approve your session, we'll call you and schedule back a time. We've turned away a lot of people who have applied because uh, they're just not giving us enough detail or they don't have enough at stake in the game. We want to work with people who, who like you who are ambitious and want to get ahead. And if you are, please represent yourself accurately on the forum. Tell us what you, where you want to be, what kind of results you want to produce, how much money you want to make, how many, how much, how many hours of free time you like to have in the next year. Um, tell us your challenges. If you have challenges with time, if you have challenges with your market, target markets, if you have cash flow challenges, let us know all that so we can adequately serve you and more than adequately serve you. Okay. So, uh, again, like I said, those of you who are asking these questions about the form, it's uh, yourvipss.com, Y-O-U-R-V-I-P-S-S.com. Go there and fill out the form, and we'll get back to you. Okay, uh, we're three minutes past our time, and I just want to really acknowledge that and acknowledge each and every one of you, and, of course, my delightful partner, Bill, who is extraordinary, great content marketer, and a great outstanding business partner and coach with me. Wonderful to have you here, Bill. And, uh, you know, thank you again for our audience for being here. I know a lot of you are interested in a strategy session. Like I said, you know, the time to commit is now. There's no perfect time, no perfect right time. Uh, you know, get on that form and apply to us, and uh, we'll respond within 24 business hours. Again, uh, next week, we will have Bill talking about a really cool topic that uh, we kind of brainstormed a little bit on. Uh, yesterday, which is reasonable goals to achieve in one year of active social media. Bill will be doing that not next Saturday, like we usually do, but next Friday at this same time at 10 a.m. Pacific time. We'll send out an email again to notify you all, but uh, make sure you carve it out in your schedule to be there for about an hour and a half because these kind of webinars are now getting so intense. You get a lot of questions, so we might go up to an hour and a half. <laughs> I know Bill is taking it. But, um, you know, uh, so come prepared, come early, opt in for that webinar and make sure you get a seat, et cetera. And, uh, hey, you know, uh, make sure those of you who are on the edge, jump in. The water is fine. Apply for that strategy session with us. We'll see you on the other side. Have a great day. Have a wonderful, successful day, and we'll see you soon. Wonderful to Have be here. Have a great here. weekend. Thanks so much, Sunil. Hey, you're welcome, man. Awesome. <laughs> All right. We'll see you soon. Take care, guys.